Hey friends, it's me Patrick God. Thank you so much for dropping by and yes, God is my last name. I know that some of you are asking this, but uh, it's true, it, it, it really is. With that out of the way, welcome to unit testing with Blazor WebSMD. We are going to use BUnit for that, created by Egil Hansen. Great guy, great stuff. So thank you so much for that. Kudos to you, Egil, for creating BUnit. It is a great unit testing framework for Blazor WebSMD. And this tutorial now is really an introduction, a, a quick first look at how to do this. You can go to the documentation of BUnit and do everything by yourself, of course, but maybe you're like me and you watch, you, you like to watch videos sometimes. And uh, in that case, well, just lean back and uh, enjoy this little tutorial. But before, if you really learned something and you like this tutorial, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel. It does make a difference. Thank you so much. For that and if you want to get more of these tutorials maybe even in your inbox earlier than here on youtube then the newsletter might be something for you and additionally you get information about upcoming online courses like the .NET web development bootcamp you will be the first to know and to get early access to that stuff if you're subscribing to my newsletter and if you're generally interested in more courses free courses maybe then you should definitely check out the link in the video description and in the comment to get one month free of Skillshare because this video here is sponsored by Skillshare and I'm pretty sure you already know what Skillshare is but if not, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills like programming for instance. The motto is invest in yourself and your personal growth. If you have a specific skill you're trying to learn, then Skillshare is the perfect place to start from not only programming or web development, but also photography, illustration to graphic design, freelancing, productivity, what that's what I really like, and more stuff. You can find classes that will match your goals and interests. For instance, I like the course from Marcus Brownlee regarding YouTube, for instance, because, well, I'm doing that. Or as I already told you, the productivity classes from, uh, for instance, Ali Abdal or Thomas Frank. I just love that stuff. And of course, you can also get my course on Skillshare about authentication and authorization with .NET 6. Here we cover JSON web tokens, roles and refresh tokens. So maybe you want to have a look. And the best thing is the first thousand people to use the link in the video description or in the comments get one month free of their Skillshare membership. So Seriously, what are you waiting for, guys? One month free Skillshare stuff. Every course is available for you. So uh, yeah, I can wait. Let me just uh, take a zip here of my tea because I have a little cold. So today, no coffee. It is a tea with a little bit of honey. So I hope this helps. And now I would say enjoy the tutorial. All right, let's start by creating a simple Blazor WebAssembly app. Not ASP.NET Core hosted or anything like that. Just want to focus on the unit tests here. So let's call this Blazor unit tests testing tutorial. And um, we use .NET 6 configure for HTTPS. That's right. But uh, not ASP.NET Core hosted. Don't need that. So no web API here. We just want to create a simple Blazor web assembly application. Here it is already. And now the already the very next step in this case here, if you want to focus on the unit testing is to create a test project, right? Let me have a quick look here at the website of B unit from uh, Eagle Hansen. Great guy, he created this thing. So as you can see here in the documentation, you've got an introduction video and so on. And also then here in the next step is already creating a test project. You can choose X unit, N unit, MS test works, everything. And uh, then you can go one step further and well, have a look at the documentation to write your tests. Or you just keep watching this video because we will use actually pretty much exactly this test here. And then one more where we will then also use a parameter. So we will test actually the counter page of the default uh, Blazor WebAssembly application. So that's that. And uh, again, the next step now is creating a test project. So right click at a new project 
and already got it here because of course I tested this a little or you just search for X unit and there's the X, X unit test project. We click next, let's say blazer test project for instance, we hit create and there is our testing, uh, there's our test projects now. Okay, now again, the next step now is actually using B unit, right? So right click the test project, we manage our new get packages, then we go to browse, I always make this mistake, I'm, I'm still at installed, looking for something, and then I'm wondering what the heck's going on here, but of course you have to switch to the browse tab, then again, uh, not X unit, we, we use for, we use, we search for B unit, 1 million downloads already, well deserved. We install this and then uh, we've got everything we need to, well, create our unit tests for the client app, for the Blazor WebAssembly client application. So let's close this and this and this and this, still save everything. And now we already see the unit test one CS file with the very first test. Now, if you're absolutely new to this stuff, just right click the test project and, and then you can just run all the tests here. We've got one test that is doing nothing actually. So this is then the result, still running. You can see it here, it's first it's building and then it's doing its magic. And after a while, this is just the very first start, this test here passes, all right? So that's that. And now let's focus on the actual tests. We uh, we actually want to create a test for the counter page. So that's this page here where we will just check what is happening when we click this button here. So when we run the application real quick, I, I'm sure you know this already, uh, but still let's have a quick look at the application. There it is on my other screen. We go to the counter page, we click this button and then the current count increases. And what this test that we are going to write now is going to do is it will magically click this button. You won't see the click of course on the screen, but it will click this button. And then we will check what is actually written here in this paragraph, right? So when we refresh, this is the current state and this is the state the testing project will also use. And then it clicks this button and then we check is this the new result in this paragraph. And this is then the actual paragraph that we want to we want to test, we want to see then. All right, so first another test and uh, maybe it makes sense to just uh, rename this because we actually don't need that. So again, you can also find this in the documentation of B unit, but uh, maybe you're like me and like to watch a little video where somebody is actually writing the code and you see how this stuff develops. So counter should increment when clicked is the name of this function now and we uh, create um, a client unit test here or counter unit test. I don't know what this abbreviation is for, but I'm just stealing it. And uh, now the thing is we can do the following. We can actually create a new context first or we just inherit from test context. And you see it here, B unit is automatically added, added now using B unit and now we get our test context from B unit and now we can just say we want to render a component and in our case this is our counter page and now here we have to add this reference here right so what I did is uh, pressing control period on my uh, keyboard you can also just click the light bulb here for the quick fix menu and then we are not of course not using a uh, system diagnostic diagnostics metrics or anything, we want to add a reference to our other project here. So add reference to Blazor unit testing tutorial. And yes, of course, we'll rebuild the application. Now it's not working anymore. Visual Studio has some issues really, but uh, I just stopped the app now. And because actually we don't need the, the, the uh, Blazor WebAssembly application, we just want to use the testing project so the app does not have to run. That's that. So now we've got the reference to our Blazor unit testing tutorial application. And you see it here, the counter page is an actual component, a Razor component here. And uh, this is what we got now when we 
write this line, render component counter. Great. And now we can do anything with that thing. And again, this is really an introduction, a very first look at unit testing with BUnit. If you want more already, please write it down in the comments. Then I uh, will do my best to go deeper into unit testing our Blazor applications. But for now, I think it's it's okay to, to just do these two tests here. So now what we can do is we can use the find method. Actually, I, I recommend just playing around with that stuff and uh, have a look at all the, the functions that are here. But the uh, easiest and the quickest thing to learn this is really use the find method. We just look for the button element. So you see it here, it returns the first element from the rendered fragment or component under test using the provided CSS selector in a depth first pre-ordered from blah, 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 right? So what we are going to do here, we want to look for our button here and at the, at the counter page, you also see we only got this specific button here and this is what we actually want to find. And in here now, there's this function click so this method then will really click this button. And then what you want to do is we want to find the paragraph, right? Again, quick look. This is then the paragraph element. And now we just want to check if the markup matches the following result. So in quotation marks, we just copy this stuff here. Com the complete thing with all the brackets paste it here. I love that it's already escaping the, uh, the quotation marks here. And the only thing that we want to change is this value, right? So of course we do not have the actual variable here. We just write one and this is what we are expecting, right? And this is pretty much how unit tests work. You're testing this one specific unit and that's the very first test. So I would suggest we right click this uh, project again, run our tests and now let's see. Counter should increment when click button is clicked and it passes the test. Now, just to double check what happens if we, for instance, write two here and run the tests one more time, it fails. And here we see why it fails. It is saying the expected HTML is current count two, but the actual result was current count one. Isn't that nice? And with that, we really see what is actually happening here. And uh, we can well test if our logic works. And now we fixed it and you see everything is fine. Great. So this is the simplest test really that we can that we can write. And now I want to I want to also uh, create a test with a parameter. For that, we have to make a change in the counter page here. And we are able to add parameters here. So I, what I want to do is I want to use a parameter um, called value where we well add the specific value. And when the button then is clicked, it is not incrementing uh, the counter or the count value just by one, but by actually the value that is given to this page or to this component, right? So hope this is clear, but when we write the code, I think it will be more clear or clearer. I don't know what's the right English here. So we've got, right, uh, we can actually do it like that. So we've got a new integer value. And let's say by default, this is one. All right. So this is now our parameter. And the only change again is not simple plus plus, so not incrementing it by one, we want to increment this now by the value. Okay, so with that now, nothing will be different. The default value is one. So our very first test should also pass, right? Let's test that already. And this is the beauty again of unit testing. You change the code and you can run your test and still uh, see if everything uh, works as expected. So just run the tests now and still everything is fine. But now what we can do is we can write another test where we set the value to a different value. Well, that's a great name for the variable, right? So the, the value the value parameter gets another value and then we will see if this still works. So again, maybe we can just remove this uh, solution explorer here. Again, you know what, let's just copy that. It's much quicker. So counter should increment when clicked and now let's say counter should increment 
by value when clicked. And now the difference is that we can again render this component here, but we can now use a Lambda expression to set parameters. So what we do is we say parameters is then parameters add, and then we say P for parameter, almost P dot, and then we already see the parameter here that is available. And with the comma, we set this value here, for instance, to two. And the rest is pretty much the same. Again, we find the button and click it. And then we just want to see if the markup now matches two, right? And that's it. This is everything you have to do. If you want to add another um, parameter here, you can again add the add method and set another parameter. So this is how that works. But again, this is really just a quick introduction, a first look at B units. I would say we just run these tests now. So now we got two, see here. And also works, isn't that nice? And we can again double check when we write something uh, that is not correct. For instance, still expecting one here, what is happening then? We run the tests one more time and that one should fail now. Correct actual is two and we expected one. So everything is correct. And just because it's so much fun, let's just see all the green check marks here and it works. Isn't that nice? So the very first look, that's it for B unit. Pretty simple. In just 10 to 15 minutes, you can set everything up with even uh, two tests written. Of course, there are so many questions left. What is happening when you have several buttons, several paragraphs on one page or in one component? There, there's so much stuff. Of stuff, of course, you can uh, you can uh, test. You can you, the different ways to write your tests and so on. Please have a look at the documentation. Or otherwise, if you have specific questions, write it down in the comments, and I'll do my best to cover that and create a new video. And of course, I will push this to GitHub. And uh, yeah, then you can uh, get the GitHub repository. Link will be in the video description. Yes, that's it. As I said, again, I know I'm repeating myself, but this is a first look, a quick introduction into B unit, into unit testing with a Blazor WebAssembly. I hope you liked it. If so, please click the like button, and maybe even subscribe to my channel. It does make a difference. Thank you so much for that. If you want to see more about unit testing with Blazor WebAssembly, then head down to the comment section and write it there. Tell me, please, guys, feedback. Would love to, uh, well, see your lines and uh, also create new videos for for you regarding unit testing uh, with Blazor WebAssembly. Additionally, if you want to see more videos and want to get them earlier than they are here on my YouTube channel, then you might want to subscribe to my newsletter because then you will get these videos earlier in your inbox. Also information about upcoming online courses like the .NET Web Development Bootcamp. So thank you very much for that. Don't forget to also get your free month of Skillshare because with that you can also get all the courses that you can find and also of course my authentication course about .NET and Apart from that, please just uh, keep watching my videos here. For instance, these on the side, feel free to hang out a little and then we can become best friends. So again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time and I hope I see you next time. Take care.